keeping it the same height going across the desk, right? And the neat thing is that if you go past its set point, then it automatically turns around and keeps on going. <laughs> nice. nice. So it's, it's true inverse kinematics. Okay. So we are going to see the unboxing. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I recorded it. It's not live. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, so we can skip through it real fast, but yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, I got this row arm uh, today via Amazon and uh, it, the box does not have any, you know, ceiling tape on it. So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I think everything arrived. Uh, so you peel it off, and this is what you see. So it comes fully assembled. Um, so various bags of parts. I think this one is uh, extra uh, um, attaching attachment plates um, and some hardware. Uh, that's a standard screwdriver that they provide. Um, uh, more uh, different kinds of attachments, USB cable, nuts and bolts, that kind of stuff. Rubber bands for tensioning it against gravity. Um, a five amp uh, 12 volt power adapter. And that's the arm fully assembled. Um, I wonder if I can point out some things real quick. Go from this point of view. So there's actually, actually, let me go better angle on it. I didn't give you the angle. Okay, so there's a base right here. So there's so this is entirely servo driven arm. Um, there's a base right here. There's a lazy Susan bearing right there to support it. Um, it's supposed to be able to go 360 degrees, um, and it does. Um, there's a shoulder joint right here. It's actually got two servos ganged together, uh, and these are all their own brand. This is the WaveShare serial bus servo brand. Um, so these are just uh, helping increase the torque. And then the elbow is up here. Um, that's a single servo. And then there's another servo here with the gripper. And there's also an LED light that you can turn on and off um, coming like out of it. It's a serious gripper. Um, <clears throat> when you said it would could rotate 360, can it uh -huh. be continuous or is it just, otherwise does it hit a stop it and have to turn around the other direction? So the servo itself can do uh, continuous motion. Um, I, I believe it can do up to five, but it doesn't have a, yeah, it, the, the wires are going to get wrapped up. Gotcha. Um, okay. Yeah. I didn't realize it had an arm, Kareem, because um, your post on Discord um, just talked about the platform, the mobile platform. Uh, this is something that I added. Uh, I think I posted somewhere around uh, uh, at it. So, so I've added notes for this to the bottom of my WaveShare notes page. Um, and I did reference it earlier um, this in the week. But uh, yeah, this is a totally separate product. Um, this is actually twice as expensive as the Rover. Uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a cool $200, uh, a little bit more than that. It's, it's like 190 if you buy it from China, but with the shipping, it's probably um, more expensive than Amazon. So on Amazon, it's going for about 225 right now um, and came in two days. So, um, uh, so let's actually see it in action. I've, I've got more like unboxing, laying out the stuff that's in those bags and stuff like that. Um, but I don't think anybody wants to go through that right now. That's cool how they've got a, a, a 2020 extrusion as the first first part of the arm. That's kind of neat. The, so it's not actually a 2020 extrusion. It's two separate extrusions. I think this is a, a European standard. It might be a 2020, but uh, it, it's not square profile. It's uh, two rectangulars that are separated. Ooh. So okay, so the twenty forty? Are you telling me like that? Or? No, it's not a forty. It's no. more like a twenty ten. Okay. 
do 2010s if that's a that looks about the size actually yeah, yeah. can i do i have an angle where i can show that Yeah, here, yeah, yeah, there, you, there, you can see the gap between them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and this is a carbon fiber rod, and the wiring does go through the carbon fiber rod for that last segment. That's pretty cool. It looks like they, you know, they 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 thought out of the box a little bit on their materials. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not. I mean, for two hundred, you know, two hundred dollars. It's it's pretty amazing. So uh, let me also point out that there's a uh, that's a little Wi-Fi antenna. So this has the same. This is driven by the same driver board yeah. um, that I've been talking about for the other robots, uh, the wave shear board. This mm -hmm. is the gen general driver board. Uh, that's a that's the Wi-Fi antenna. That right there is a little is a tiny little OLED display, um, and so it boots up out of the box with a Wi-Fi interface. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also, there's a whole ROS2 project behind it as well. Um, so, um, and it comes with this handy little desk clamp. Mm -hmm. So I guess it doesn't mount on the rover, is that correct? It can. You, you'd have to take it off of the desk clamp. That's what some yeah. of those extra brackets uh, that it came with are for. Um, so I wouldn't mount it on my rover. Here's my ro uh, rover. Yeah, my rover's a little bit on the small side, but they have those slightly larger UGD six wheel ones, um, where they show people mounting the arm directly on it. Oh yeah, because I thought I thought I looked at that that four wheel one that you got, and it didn't seem like it would be proportionate to the size of the arm that you're showing. Yeah, no, this is a this is a pretty large arm. So basically, the radius of it is half a meter. Um, so, you know, the diameter that it can reach is a full meter. Um, and it's supposed to be able to fully extend it, be able to lift uh, about a pound. Uh, oh. uh, um, so, and now it's it's still, it's still hobby, slightly better than hobby level servos. So um, there's a lot of play in it. It's not super precise. It's not what you're gonna get with a, you know, real professional, uh, robot arm, but that's a really, you know, low cost way of getting into arms and still, you know, still have a chance to get, you know, exposure to how move it to and, you know, RAWs, how, how people tackle uh, kinematics and stuff like that in RAWs. So it's pretty, uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Okay. There's got to be one question. Is, yeah. it, is this uh, FTC uh, legal? No, absolutely not. Okay. For FTC, uh, any off the for, first of all, you can't have extra controllers. Yeah. Um, there are no extra programmable controllers. Um, the servos that they support are only the standard RC style. Mm -hmm. So pulse width modulation, uh, the serial servos, they're, they're not supported. Uh, and you can't buy anything off the shelf that's more than one degree of freedom. Huh. Oh, okay. That kind of fails on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not this is not for the for the team. Yeah. Okay, so Kareem, if you mm -hmm. clamp this to the table and have the end effector grab the joystick on an RC controller for a robot, <laughs> would that count as teleop? <laughs> that's that's a good question. Well, that's a real good question. And then you could use computer vision to like guide it. So that would that would there ought to be a Rube Goldberg division. I'd like to see that. <laughs> Do you have that whipped up for I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a demo I'm gonna invest a lot of time in. Oh yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. It would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be cool. So I'm going to actually show you the robot. Uh, or the arm. So you guys can see that? Yep. Yep. Is my audio still okay? Yep. 
Okay. All right. So this is so I'm connected via my laptop here uh, over Wi-Fi to it. So there's no RAWs. There's no host computer in it. I'm just doing the built-in, you know, the built-in web interface. So this section up here is controlling the joints individually. So this is the base right here. Right there. If you hit init, it goes to the initialized power on position, which is like that. Um, so this is a shoulder. That's the elbow going up and down. And this is the, uh, can we see the gripper opening? Yeah, we can see it. Let me go. So there's the gripper opening and closing. So it's just a single side paddle that opens and closes. Who's Ooh. eating the chips? <laughs> Is that Ray? No. <laughs> no? Some, no chips oh, here. Somebody's crinkling a bag of chips. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, I haven't heard any of that. It, huh. it might be feedback, so let's let's uh, until we can uh, stop driving cream mad. Let's all mute unless we can say something, because it might be feedback too. Uh, Kareem, yeah. Uh, and the is there a wrist? Uh, no, the the gripper is the wrist, if you like, uh, and we could add more onto it if we needed to. That is so weird. I'm keeping it. I keep getting this uh, crackling noise. All right, so um, uh, you can also turn off the torque. So if I do torque off, then now I can move it just fine. I can reposition it, right? And then I can put torque back on, and now it's going to hold. Uh, so this is the amount of play that you've got in it. It's, it's quite a bit. This DEFA off and on, I have no idea what that is. You know, I just unboxed this, you know, 20 minutes before. Uh, here's the LED turning on, off. Um, here's where we start getting into the inverse kinematics. So uh, these are actually backwards. This one that labeled vertical drag is actually going to be horizontal. Um, but if uh, what it's doing is it's keeping it the same height going across the desk, right? And the neat thing is that if you go past its set point, then it automatically turns around and keeps on going. <laughs> nice. nice. So it's it's true inverse kinematics. Whoops, don't want to go that way. It'll hit my laptop. Uh, so back out of that. Um, and then you can also control the joints. Uh, you can tr control it here as well. So this is this is X. So it's just going, and this is uh, Y is, um, Y is actually, why did it go out that way? Uh, that's more like Z. Oh, okay. So, so Y is actually um, keeping it, is the base turning. I guess that makes sense. And then, uh, and then Z, or, or it's, it's just the X and Y axes basically. Uh, uh, Z is up and down, but I don't, I don't know if you can tell. Uh, I guess I'm off, actually off screen at the moment. Let me go back to init. Um, but while it's, while it's doing this, it is, uh, yeah, this is going straight up and down, but it's going forward and backwards to keep the curve out, right? Um, uh, the section down here is where you get access to the JSON uh, uh, text command API. Um, so you can just type your commands directly in there, uh, and then you can hit send and send it to the robot. And at the bottom, there's a whole section of different sample commands that you might send, so it's sort of self-documenting. So here's torque control, dynamic adaptation. So I think it has, like, you can um, uh, control how much force it's going to try to produce, uh, which, is, which is something you're not going to get with regular hobby grade servos. Um, there's movement control commands. So, uh, and this is just, you know, this is with the built in ESP32 
just responding to those JSON commands. This is before you get into any kind of ROS control over it. So that's that's all I wanted to share. Seems seems like a promising platform for the price. Yeah, it seems well thought out. I've been yeah. impressed by the WaveShare products that I've had. Um, yeah, they they do a pretty they, they do a pretty good job. When they get lost in the weeds, though, they really get lost, you know, because you're yeah. something nitty gritty. But mm -hmm. uh, overall, they're a good company. Do you, do you have the WaveShare Rover anywhere convenient that you could show? Kareem, I, I don't know if you've shown it previously, but I, oh, oh, okay, cool. It's it's actually off screen at the moment. Cool. Thank you. Uh, so this one has a Raspberry Pi stacked on top. Um, uh, that's an NVMe board um, to make it go a little bit faster. There's the little OLED display right there. Um, it's normally over here, so I haven't, you know. So again, this is 